The year is 746 AD, and the rugged slopes of the mountains stand as a fortress for the proud descendants of the ancient Hellenes. Byzantine forces, under the command of Emperor Constantine V, march to confront rebellious Slavic tribes who have encroached on Greek lands. Yet, in the shadows of this struggle, the spirit of the Peloponnesian Greeks shines undiminished. In the isolated region of Deep Mani, stories of defiance spread. This is where the true heirs of Sparta hold their ground, preserving the ancient ways, their faith, and their freedom. Against all odds, these Greeks have weathered invasions and upheavals, proving that their legacy is not one of extinction, but of unyielding endurance and pride. The Peloponnese was settled through a series of migrations over nearly 9,000 years. The first settlers came from Anatolia around 9,000 BC and set up Neolithic communities. Later, the Mycenaeans, who built a major Bronze Age civilization, either migrated from the north around 2200 BC or descended from those early Neolithic settlers. Around 1000 BC, the Dorian Greeks invaded, a migration known in Greek tradition as the Return of the Heraclids. For the next 1,400 years, wars and epidemics affected population numbers but didn't bring new groups. Significant changes began in the medieval period with Slavic migrations to the Balkans, which have shaped how historians view the region for the past 170 years. In 1830 AD, German historian Jacob Philipp Falmeria introduced his theory claiming that the Greek nation had disappeared and been replaced by Slavs. Falmeria argued that in the 6th century AD, large armies of Avars and Slavs swept through the Balkans, wiping out the populations of Hellas, who had previously managed to survive barbarian invasions and religious persecution by the Byzantines. According to him, the Peloponnesian Greeks were either slaughtered or driven away, with only small groups surviving in fortified coastal areas, while the region became home to Slavic tribes. These Slavs maintained their identity for a few centuries, but were eventually assimilated, influenced by the Orthodox Church and interactions with Hellenized populations from Asia Minor resettled in the Peloponnese by the Byzantines. Since Falmeria's theory was published, historians have fiercely debated the ancestry of the Peloponnesians. Interestingly, despite their opposing views, all historians have relied on the same medieval written sources. Controversies are common in historiography, often leading to endless debates among scholars. Disputes about the ancestry of populations, however, can potentially be clarified through genetic analysis. In this study, scientists use genome-wide data to analyze the genetic structure of Peloponnesian populations and compare them with others worldwide. They identified distinct patterns of genetic differentiation within the Peloponnese, investigated their possible causes, and specifically addressed the impact of Slavic migrations on the genetic makeup of Peloponnesians. Their findings reject the theory that medieval Peloponnesian Greeks were wiped out and replaced by Slavic or Asia Minor settlers. This study dives into the genetic history of rural Peloponnesians, focusing on people with deep local roots. Researchers gathered DNA from 241 individuals, all with grandparents born in the same village or nearby, less than 10 kilometers apart, ensuring strong ties to the region. Most participants were aged 70 to 90, with a few over 100, meaning their family history dates back to the 1860s, when the Peloponnese was a mostly farming society of small villages. The study also highlighted two unique cultural groups, the Tsakos and the Maniats, while comparing their DNA to other populations around the world. It's a rare and detailed look at how a region's past is written in its people's genes.
To figure out how closely people are related based on their DNA, researchers analysed shared genetic segments passed down from common ancestors. The analysis focused on only the most reliable genetic markers and excluded any with unclear or unreliable information. The results were visualised with heat maps, which showed how closely related different groups of people were, based on how much DNA they shared. They developed a method using genetic data to compare and quantify the overlap in ancestry between these groups, breaking it down into clear percentages to understand historical connections. The study confirmed that Peloponnesians are genetically very similar to Sicilians and Italians, but distinct from many other populations. A network analysis showed strong genetic links between Peloponnesians, Italians and Sicilians, with Italians and Sicilians acting as a genetic bridge connecting Peloponnesians to other European groups like the Basque, Andalusians and French. In contrast, Slavic populations and Near Eastern populations are genetically distant, although the latter shows some connection to the Peloponnese through Crete and the Dodecanese islands. The theory that Peloponnesians are mostly of Slavic ancestry was tested by comparing their genetics to populations from the Slavic homeland north of the Danube, modern-day Poland, Ukraine, Russia and Belarus. Analysis showed that Peloponnesians are clearly distinct from Slavic populations with only a small amount of genetic overlap, rejecting the idea that most of their ancestry is Slavic. Paul Mariah suggested that Slavs in the Peloponnese were quickly Hellenized due to the arrival of Greek-speaking settlers from Asia Minor, including Armenians. To test this, researchers compared Peloponnesians with populations from three areas of Asia Minor, the western coast, the Black Sea region, Pontus, and Cappadocia. Genetic analysis showed clear differences between Peloponnesians and these groups, with only minor overlap with the nearby coastal populations, which is typical for neighbouring Greek populations. Armenians were also distinct from Peloponnesians. The Maniots, a unique group from the Peloponnese, stand out genetically from other Peloponnesians, mainland Greeks, island Greeks and Asia Minor Greeks. They share some overlap with Sicilians and Italians, but are distinct from Slavic populations. Historical records describe Slavic tribes like the Melingi and Ezeritai being forced into the Taigidos region, but genetic analysis shows that Maniots are unlikely to be of Slavic origin. Another theory proposed by Falma Raya suggests that Maniots descend from the Mardates, a medieval warrior tribe from the mountains between Asia Minor and Syria. However, Genetic comparisons also show no significant connection between Maniots and Mardaites, or their supposed descendants, the Maronites of Lebanon. These findings challenge traditional theories about the origins of the Maniots. The Sarkos, who live on the eastern slopes of Mount Parnon, are genetically distinct from other Peloponnesians and all other populations studied. Historically, they spoke a unique dialect of Doric origin that was unintelligible to other Peloponnesians. Medieval writers linked their name to the ancient Laconas. Falmeria, however, claimed they descended from an early Slavic tribe that settled in the Peloponnese before the major Slavic migrations. Genetic analysis does not support this theory, pointing instead to their Doric roots. Specifically, they share 85 to 96% of ancestry with Italians, 53 to 62% with Andalusians, and 39 to 42% with the French, compared to less than 15% with Slavic groups like Belarusians, Russians, and Ukrainians. Interestingly, the Basques, known for being genetically isolated, share only about 4% of ancestry with Peloponnesians, a figure similar to the low genetic overlap between Peloponnesians and Slavic populations. This underscores the Peloponnesians' stronger genetic ties to Southern Europe rather than to Slavic or isolated populations.
The findings show that Peloponnesians share less than 1% in deep mani and 8 to 11% genetic overlap with Slavs in Tayegados regions. As stated earlier, Zakonia shares even less, especially South Zakonia, which overlaps with Slavs by less than 1%. In contrast, the Peloponnesians share much higher ancestry with Italians, from 14 to 25 percent in Deep Mani and South Tsakonia, to 41 to 57 percent in Tyagados and North Tsakonia. As expected, Basques remain genetically distant from all Peloponnesian populations, emphasizing their isolated genetic history. This study resolves a long-standing historical debate about whether the medieval Peloponnesian Greeks were wiped out and replaced by Slavs. It confirms that while Slavs did settle in the Peloponnese, their numbers were small compared to the local population, as shown by the low levels of Slavic ancestry across Peloponnesian groups. Historical texts suggesting extensive Slavic dominance such as Porphyrogenitus' account of Slavic tribes in Tayegados, are reconciled with genetic data by recognizing that these settlements were likely small and later diluted by migrations from densely populated areas like Deep Mani. The unique genetic and cultural features of the Tsakonis and Maniots further highlight the impact of geographic isolation. Similarly, Deep Mani an inhospitable yet densely populated area appears to have served as a refuge for ancient populations like the Hellenes described by Porphyrogenitus. These findings suggest that both historical texts and genetic evidence provide complementary insights and future studies such as ancient DNA analysis could deepen our understanding of connections between modern and ancient populations in the Peloponnese. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.